All right, you can turn in your King James Bible to Matthew chapter 3 and verse 10. I feel compelled to do kind of an odd study here uh, because I'm seeing a lot of people being ripped off, and I think it's wrong. And um, I'm going to talk today about the firewood scam. All right. <laughs> yes, very strange uh, thing here, you know, I, I realize that, but and I am going to tie it into salvation, so don't get excited. You should be preaching the gospel. Well, I will be. Um, but uh, there's a lot of things in this life that uh, tie into the scriptures, and the scriptures, the Bible has their number, the corrupt people out there. I'm going to prove it again. Matthew chapter 3 and verse 10 says, And now also the axe is laid under the root of the trees, Therefore, every tree which bringeth not forth good fruit is hewn down and cast into the fire. There's your firewood right there. <laughs> you want scriptural proof for that uh, firewood, how you get firewood and everything else? Uh, this is actually really good forestry advice. You have trees that are called cull trees, C-U-L-L, -L, cull trees. Those trees are tre ones that are crooked. They don't grow quite right. They have some disease in them and whatever else. And the best thing to do with them is take the axe or chainsaw and lay it towards the roots of the trees. In other words, not necessarily under the ground, but the butt base of the tree, don't cut up top or something. And you cut the tree down and what do you do? You hew it down and then you saw it and split it into firewood. It's cast into the fire. All right, you don't just go out and cut down the, the very most prime timber for firewood. Um, that's the way it is. And the best thing that you can do a lot of times for a property is to cut down the diseased, sickly trees and turn them into firewood. Um, right now, we have a thing here in northern Maine um, with a lot of the beech trees. They have a weird blight. I forget if it's a bug or some kind of a fungal thing, or I forget what the deal is, but this there's this blight that's going around. It's killing all the beech trees. So we're starting this year to really go. My son and I have been out doing some logging and we go out and, and we've been cutting down these beech trees for firewood. So we are practicing Matthew chapter 3 verse 10. But uh, for, uh, I guess I did it probably about maybe, uh, I think it was right around two years I sold firewood in the past. And for many years, uh, I mean I was basically raised uh, down in Pennsylvania, we had firewood was our main source of heat. We had a wood stove and we heated our home like that. We heated with, with wood. So um, we were, basically I was born in a house when, when uh, and I don't know if my parents had a wood stove in that home. I don't think that they did. But when I was three years old, uh, they built a house back, they bought more land, built a house back in the woods. And from the time I was three years old until today, um, pretty much heated with wood the whole entire time. So I know firewood very well. I understand, you know, a lot about firewood. Like I said, I sold firewood in the past. And, um, and here's the basics of how firewood works, okay? You cut trees down, the cull trees. You hew, hew them down, cut them down. That would be the modern way of saying it. You do that in... Uh, pretty much any time of the year you can cut down your firewood depending on your schedule and whatever else but the important thing is you need to let that firewood sit over the summer months so it's ready to burn that fall it has to be that's what's called seasoning firewood it's very important and when i was selling firewood a lot of times my firewood was very well seasoned i made sure it had you know, went the whole way through. A lot of times I would cut it in the fall or even through the winter and then let it sit all summer long and then sell in the, in the next fall for people for their stoves. And I would keep it covered and everything else. Again, you cover the top, not the sides. We'll get more into that here in a minute. And my wood would be very well seasoned. A lot of good heavy checking on the end grain. Um, nice and dry. It uh, No problems with burning. You put it in the stove, it burns nicely produces really good heat doesn't sit in there and sizzle and have a bunch of water coming out the end grain and that's the way you do it um and i would get people and they would say yeah i bought firewood from some other guy amish in particular would rip people off a lot of times and they would say we're selling a cord of firewood which i'll explain about that in a little bit 
And the people would get this firewood, and a lot of times the firewood was still green. It was still very wet. And I literally had a guy that bought firewood, took it home, dumped it in his yard, and he said within a day or two, the, this dry firewood was actually sprouting branches and leaves. Little buds, little green leaves were coming up because he bought it in late summer. Uh, I don't think it was dry. Uh, he got lied to. And he said, another guy said he was trying to split, and he said there was, you know, he'd hit with the mall on the end grain, and he said there'd be water splashing out of the wood. Uh, it's not seasoned. And he was paying for seasoned firewood. Well, there's a lot of fear-mongering going on right now with the news, me news media and everything about blackouts and dark winter and all the other stuff. And I'm seeing a whole lot of people buying firewood. And I know that there's a lot of people in the area here that sell firewood, that are basically ripping people off. They're going after the gullible and the ignorant, and they're selling them seasoned firewood, which is actually green firewood. It's not good stuff. And so, just I feel compelled, I want to say something about this because it's dishonest. It's rather disgusting to me. And uh, I'll tell some stories about it, but let me give you another scriptural tie into this thing of this scam of firewood. We're going to see another parallel passage to Matthew chapter 3, if you turn over in your Bible to Matthew chapter 7, and we'll see something interesting here. Matthew chapter 7, verse 15. Matthew 7, verse 15 through 20 says, Beware of false prophets which come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they are ravening wolves. Hmm. Uh, interesting because uh, the pastors in the church buildings, they wear sheep's clothing. What are you talking about? Their suits are made out of wool. Suit jackets. Isn't that kind of an interesting little tie-in? I'm sure there's nothing to that. Verse 16. Ye shall know them by their fruits. Do men gather grapes of thorns or figs of thistles? Even so every good tree bringeth forth good fruit, but a corrupt tree bringeth forth evil fruit. A good tree cannot bring forth evil fruit, neither can a corrupt tree bring forth good fruit. Every tree that bringeth not forth good fruit is hewn down and cast into the fire. Wherefore, by their fruits ye shall know them. Um, you get these guys that are making firewood and selling firewood, they're producing rotten fruit because they're selling wood to people and they're being dishonest. Uh, last year around this time, there was a family that came here from Alabama and I thought, well, they're kind of crazy for trying to move to northern Maine in the beginning of winter. You never do that. Um, you, if you want to move to a northern environment and you're going to move off grid, um, you move in the spring, early spring, and then you work throughout the summer to get prepared for the winter. Very much like the thing of firewood. Saw it in the spring, let it season over the summer so it's ready for winter. Well, this family showed up and they said, you know, we're wanting to, move, to buy property. And, we're, and I said, what are you going to do for firewood? Because I'm thinking can't just do whatever there and uh, oh well we'll just get some from the land I said do you realize how much snow we get here uh, you can't exactly just go around and get you know dead timber or whatever that's laying on the ground it's going to be soaking wet most times not really appropriate for burning anyhow and there is you can use some dead standing timber but you know if it's a softwood type of a thing but hardwood a lot of times your birch trees will just rot the bark is waterproof the wood just rots inside so you see these birch trees that are standing a lot of times you go over and you just knock them right down they just splatter when they hit the ground so I'm thinking to myself these people have no idea what they're doing and they didn't and so they were up there and I said well you know it's not really going to work and whatever and they wanted to park a travel trailer on the land that they were buying and I advised them okay that land that you're looking at buying there is way overpriced bad situation so they didn't buy it but they still wanted to move up so I actually said okay I'll let you actually move on to our property that was a mistake but I was trying to be nice I am an outgoing guy you know and people don't know that people think that I just you know I'm a hermit that lives inside of whatever you know and I don't want to deal with people that's not true so I gave them a chance to move on to our land and I just kept saying, you know, something needs to be done about the firewood here. You need to do something about the firewood. And they were just back and forth, Alabama to Maine, bringing all their stuff up. And I'm thinking, okay, but you need to have firewood. You need to get your heat situation figured out. If you're going to live off-grid, you really need to be good at with the heat thing. 
and they had this little Chinese, you know, uh, tent type of stove, wall tent type of stove from Walmart or something, I think it was. And I'm, again, I'm thinking, it's not going to do it. And a travel trailer, these, you know, RVs or whatever, they don't have the insulation in them to survive a winter up here. Right. Uh, there are people that do live in them up here, but they build on the little side room or something like that and put a wood stove in it. You can't just, oh, but I have fervor and whatever, and, you know, I'll make it because we want, we think that we'll make it or something. Well, that doesn't work. So what can we do? What can we do? And, and I said, well, there's some, there's a company here locally that uh, sells firewood and check with them see, and make sure. Is it seasoned? Is it seasoned? Okay, yeah. So I showed them where the place was. I, they went in and we had another errand to run. So I wasn't there to hear. And we get back. Oh, yeah. They said it's seasoned firewood. We bought four cords of seasoned firewood. That should be good for a while and everything. And they have more if we need it. And I'm thinking, okay, I don't remember seeing where they keep their firewood. But maybe they, okay, they have it someplace else. So delivered it up to the property. And there were some issues there, but I won't get into that. And uh, they didn't deliver it where I told them to, to deliver it to. This family was not listening to me, but whatever. Deliver it up. And uh, I went out and I'm looking at the wood and I pick it up and I thought, okay, as soon as I picked it up, I could feel it's too heavy. It's green. It's wet, in other words. Took some pieces and kind of knocked them together. They should kind of have a little bit of a ring to them. They didn't ring. And I'm thinking, I think you got scammed here. And I said, that feels like it's pretty wet oh no he said it was seasoned he said that they cut the logs you know a year ago or whatever else um you can't cut logs and, and a year later and say that the log itself is seasoned no you have to saw it and split it into firewood and let it sit over the summer logs can be sitting for 10 20 30 years and still be green inside again if you understand anything about lumber i'm going to get very technical in this study here so bear with me but you can only actually kiln dry something if it's six inches thick or less. Most sawmills that you go to where they sell lumber, you'll get the, usually the biggest size that you can get is about 16 quarter is what you'll hear, which is four inches. 16 quarters is four inches. Um, one, you know, uh, four quarter would be a one inch board, in other words, in the lumber world. So... You learn all kinds of interesting things here at this ministry. <laughs> but uh, six inches, eh, depending on the type of wood, you're really going to get, you get into the heart of that thing, it's going to have a fairly high moisture content. But you go over six inches, forget it. You're not going to ever bring it down to being kiln dried. So, again, you have a log that's this big or something, and you, you saw it up, or you have it just out there, and it's on a big pile. It's not going to dry. Okay, I don't care, especially if it has the bark on it. It's not going to dry sitting there for a year. And you take it and you saw it and you split it and you say, there, seasoned. It's not seasoned. That is a lie. All right, so they went out and they got this wood. And I was just thinking to myself, and I'd been cutting dead standing timber for them before then. And, oh, it's, you know, it keeps us a little bit warm in there. And, and I'm just thinking, this doesn't look good. This doesn't look good. And sure enough, they were out there and... Uh, trying to heat their little travel trailer thing and where our property is we're way up on a mountain so we get a lot of wind and it gets really cold and uh they were up you know out there and they're with their wood and trying to you know heat with it and it was just in there sizzling and all you know it has to what will happen when you have wet firewood is it'll slowly burn the outside of the wood but the end grain is where the moisture has to come out of so until all that moisture is out of there, that wood is not going to burn correctly. And so as it starts to burn, it kind of creates a hardened surface on the outside. The Japanese figured this out a long time ago uh, with their carpentry, their outdoor carpentry, and they do what's called shosugi ban, I think is what it's called, where they actually will burn the outside of timbers that will be exposed to the elements, and it creates some like a protected coating. You can see it all over YouTube. There's guys that, are, that do this technique of burning logs, burning timbers, and it creates a really protected surface, better than treated lumber, chemically treated lumber, which they use arsenic, by the way, to, with your treated lumber, your womanized lumber that you get from a 
you know, treated lumber from a, you know, Lowe's or Home Depot or whatever else, it's treated with arsenic, very highly toxic. Don't walk around with your bare feet on that stuff because if you get a splinter, it's going right into your body. Arsenic is going into your body. Just another little thing there. I actually knew uh, uh, my sister-in-law, to my oldest brother, um, she actually had that happen. Got arsenic into the bottom of her foot and her foot got very badly infected and everything else because of a splinter from a deck. So, um, so that's what happens when you burn green wood. It actually will cause sort of a blackening effect on the outside and it takes forever to burn. Temperature goes way down because it has to get rid of all this moisture. And of course, you're going to have your saps and your resins in that wood that will create what's called creosote. If it's not burning very hot, it's going to create creosote, which is a sticky black uh, substance that gets inside your, your chimney pipe or your uh, either your stove pipe or your chimney, like your masonry chimney. And then, of course, if that builds up and builds up, that stuff is flammable, and you get a spark coming up from the wood. That's If you're burning something, it has some pitch in it, and it lights up, spark goes up in, hits the creosote, and whew, you have a chimney fire. And I've seen chimney fires. I've dealt with chimney fires. Um, it's okay if you're right there. But what happens with most people, they throw a bunch of wood in, big, huge pieces of wood, and it's creating creosote, and they do that night after night, and all of a sudden you get all this creosote build up, and it lights up. They're in bed, sleeping, thinking that their wood stove is going to you know, provide the heat throughout the night, and it burns, and it gets out through the... Usually it's a masonry type of, like a stone or brick chimney, and it'll get out through cracks because it's burning in there, and it gets out through the cracks, gets into the house, and... You can burn the whole house down with a chimney fire. That's why it's important to sell people dry firewood. And getting back to the story of this family that came up here last year, um, they didn't make it. They lasted for about, I think it was a week. And uh, they're, and they, oh, the Lord's called us elsewhere. Yeah, I'm sure he has. And so they, they're gone. You know, um, and it was all because of firewood. Firewood that was sold from a scammer in the area here. Oh, it's dry, it's seasoned. No, it's not. No, it's not. And I'm seeing this thing because of the media hype right now. I'm seeing this thing of, I mean, we're seeing dump trucks. They're bringing firewood past in dump trucks. They're not even using just their regular trucks. There's just so many people buying, ordering firewood. Oh, I want firewood. You know, um, neighbors in the area here, I'm seeing the, the big piles of firewood being dumped in the yard and they take it right into their house and they're stacking it. And their people are taking firewood in their doing all kinds of other things with it. And I'm just thinking, it's not dry. It's not dry. This is a scam. These people are being scammed, and it, it angers me. These logging companies are not bringing forth good fruit. You see? People are relying on this, thinking that if the power goes down, the grid goes down, then we can get this firewood. And if you're in an area where you're thinking the same thing, you have done it or you are thinking of doing it, um, be very careful. You need to understand the science behind firewood. You know, people say, oh, wood stoves are so dangerous. Well, they are if you do them the wrong way. If you're burning good dry firewoods, wood stoves are not dangerous at all. I mean, literally, our wood stove at our property, um, we have nice dry firewood that was done last year. Um, the wood stove at our property, my son takes care of it, Oliver. He loads the firewood in and takes care of it, does all the vent and everything else, puts his leather gloves on, puts the wood in there, and takes the shovel and moves the coals around. And They're very simple to work on, very easy, and you get wonderful heat from them. But the wood has to be dry. It has to be dry. So I'm going to make a few points here. Um, if you're going to buy firewood, you need to purchase it in the uh, late winter, early spring, and let it dry all summer. Okay, you can put it outside. There's guys that do, uh, I think it's called a holes housing or something like that. And it's basically you stack the firewood in a round circle. I've shown that in some of my videos. We did that the one time. It's okay. Works all right. Um, but there's other ways that you can do it. But, the, the again, the science behind it is you can throw it into a big pile and let the rain hit it and everything else. It's not real bad for it. It'll actually wash off a lot of the oils and resins and, you know, tannic acid and things if you have oak 
that's not that bad to let it out in the rain for a little bit, but you have to get it under cover someplace. And you put it into a wood shed, which is just a roof on top, and you leave the sides open. People will put it on their porches where the sunlight can hit it. Um, but you need to have air movement and sunlight. That's the most important thing. Right? And it's very important that I get this out because I see a lot of people making these mistakes. They don't understand the science of firewood. Um, and another thing that I have to say here before we continue, and that is another way, way that these uh, firewood companies will rip people off is they'll say, we're selling you a cord of firewood. What is a cord of firewood? A cord of firewood measures, it's three rows, and it measures four feet wide. The pile is four feet high and eight feet long. That is a cord of firewood. One row is a face cord. So again, I had people that would come and I used to sell firewood and they would, I'd have this big rack. I had cord racks. They were eight feet long, four feet wide, you know, three rows and four feet high. And they would unload one row and they'd say, okay, thank you. And I'd say, no, you get the other two. Huh? Well, I bought firewood from some Amish guy and, and he sold me this, just this thing and he called it a cord. I was charging the same price that you charge for three rows. And I said, yeah, the guy ripped you off. It's three rows. Firewood, should le firewood length should be about 16 inches on average. They could be a little shorter, a little bit longer, but to get a real true face cord, it should be right around 16 inches. 16 times three is 48. You see, you see how that works. It's important that I get this stuff out because there's a lot of people that are getting ripped off right now and it's, it's angering me how these guys are scamming people. Um, and if you see, if you would order firewood from one of these types of places, a lot of times you'll see huge firewood of different lengths that have to actually be re-split and re -sawed. And we saw that, this wood that this family got, the four cords that they got here locally, um, they just said, oh, do you mind if we just leave this on your property? You can have it. We'll just give it to you and whatever else. And I said, okay, fine. You know, yeah. I had to re-saw and re-split most of it. It was terrible. I mean, they were, they were pieces of firewood this big. And I just thought, you know, it barely would even fit in my stove. I don't, we don't have a huge stove in our, our you know, little uh, off-grid tiny home thing. And I thought I could barely get this thing in there. And it definitely would not be dry. So... Uh, watch out for that too. You know, again, if you have professional firewood guys, they should be getting it close to 16 inches. Again, variations of a few inches are fine, but if you're seeing huge stuff that's, you know, bigger than about maybe that, like that, yeah, it's questionable. All right. Um, and another thing that I've seen people in the area do, and it's just, we always laugh about it and just say, oh, look, city people. <laughs> They'll cover the firewood completely with a tarp or especially clear plastic. That one's always funny. Um, they, you know, they, they'll get this, somebody backs in with a, a load of firewood. They dump it right on the dirt, you know, right there. So the wood just absorbs all the moisture from the ground. Dump it right on the ground. And then they take clear plastic and put it over top and rocks on top of the clear plastic to keep it, you know, from blowing off. And I just think, <laughs> you know, and, the, and I guess the concept is, they're so brilliant because sunlight can get through the tarp and heat up the wood, sort of like a greenhouse, um, and so that'll dry out the wood on top of the wet ground. And what happens is they actually create a large solar-powered uh, uh, moss and fungi uh, incubator, <laughs> and the, they go out and the wood's all moldy and everything, and it's soaking wet. It's even wetter than when it was delivered, and oh, I didn't think that would happen. You know, and I see this all the time with these people. Um, you cover firewood on the top. Leave the sides open. That's where the moisture has to come out at. The way that you can tell firewood if it's drying is you look at the end grain, it'll have big cracks in it called checking. You know, again, remember I was in wood, you know, both logging and wood turning and some wood carving for many years before I got called to the ministry. So... This is an area that I know quite well. I was at, you know, sawmills and and I even had my own chainsaw mill and everything else, so I understand it very well. Um, another big problem that a lot of these people have no clue about, and that is, you need kindling um, to start the stove. 
again, I, I can just envision a lot of these people with these big piles of firewood covered in clear plastic. And I can just imagine them, you know, sticking it in the stove and putting the little lighter on it or something, or a match. You know, you know, it's not lighting. I wonder why. We'll put a bunch of paper in there and then light the paper and, and it burns a little bit and then out. The wet, the water and the wood will put it out. Don't worry. Um, you know, if you if you have a fire, just throw a bunch of your soaking wet firewood at it and then it'll put it out. <laughs> That's pretty bad. But people don't understand the need for dry kindling. Kindling is just a piece of wood. It's not the full length, 16 inches, a little bit shorter, and you split it. Um, split it into small little sticks, or you can go out and get dry sticks off of trees or wherever. But you need to have starter wood to put on top of your paper. Birch bark works very good as well. But you need to have small wood and then graduate up to the bigger stuff when you have a good bed of hot coals in there. I've been doing this all my life, so I understand it very well. But again, oh, we're, we're ready for the dark winter thing and whatever else. Um, do you have kindling? Do you have a nice supply of dry kindling? Oh, we didn't think to buy that. Well, why don't you just go make some of your own? Go collect some dead sticks and things. And you need a lot of it, if you're, especially if you're burning this soaking wet wood, which I'll get back to that here in a little bit. Another problem is these people, a lot of times they have Chinese-made wood stoves. Go to Tractor Supply or Lowe's or something, and oh man, I can get a wood stove for $500. Um, yeah, and uh, my parents actually had bought a one uh, stove, one of these newer modern stoves at the one time, and I grew up with a Fisher. We had a Fisher stove in the house that I was raised in, and then they sold that house and the stove went with it and bought a new place, and uh, the stove that they had in that new place, um, it was this brand new thing, and oh, it's very low emissions, and, you know, makes almost no smoke and all this other stuff. Yeah, it makes no heat, too. And it was completely lined with fire brick the whole way around the inside and had baffles all over the outside of the stove so it's safe and you couldn't get burned if you touched it. I literally sat on top of the stove with it burning full blast just to show how stupid and inefficient it was. I don't have any pictures of it or anything, but you could put your hand on top of the stove while it's burning in there flaming up and everything. You don't try that on a regular wood stove. And But again, these people, oh, we go and we got... We have our Chinese-made stove that we got to tractor supply or wherever, and we're going to be warm when the power goes out. No, you won't. Uh, don't fall for that scam. Uh, the best thing that you can do is to find an old wood stove. Um, there's also a good company, Yodel, J-O-T-U-L, I think is how it is, or J-O-T-E-L, I forget. But uh, they're one of the oldest stove makers out there. They make good stoves as well. But uh, again, another one of the big scams back in the 1970s, I think it was, the EPA stepped in and made a whole bunch of new restrictions that you can't have this on wood stoves. And there were, I remember I talked to a guy at a stove shop the one time and he said there were literally hundreds of stove manufacturers and it narrowed it down because of the new EPA regulations. It narrowed it down to, I think, a dozen or so stove manufacturers after that that could afford to pay for all these new standards and everything else. So the new wood stoves that are less emission and everything else, um, they barely even heat your home. So you go with an old wood stove, old wood cook stove or something like that, you'll have plenty of good heat. And uh, oh, they're bad for the environment. That, that whole thing is such a scam. I will be preaching on that in the future, this environmentalist agenda. It's an agenda. It's not about taking care of nature and whatever else. I mean, man has been burning firewood for thousands of years. It's not bad for the environment, okay? <laughs> Wood smoke is actually very good for the environment. There are actually trees, I know Douglas fir trees out west, they don't properly you know, germinate, the seeds don't germinate correctly unless there's some ash in the soil. So, you know, in other words, there's supposed to be you know, forest fires out there occasionally and whatever else. So it, God's design for nature is, and for man is wood smoke, wood stoves, all right? That's the way it is, it's a renewable resource whatever uh, well they can't uh, nobody you know it's it's a thing that not everybody can have wood stoves well i i get it i understand that but you know for those of us that live in the country for those of us that want to have a system of heat that works even if there's no electricity there's nothing better than a wood stove okay so again another little thing of mine there 
Um, but what happens if you are one of these ones that has been suckered into buying this wet wood? Well, I have dealt with that in the past. Um, years ago, back when we went to um, Gasland, we called it, Eldred, Pennsylvania, and, and we're working with a Baptist church there. I was preaching from the pulpit and things. Um, wasn't officially an assistant pastor, but basically that's the position I had there. Um, we were just there for a little bit. We were helping out with their store, and then I would preach you know, on occasion, Sunday nights. Sunday morning, I took over for him the one time when he was away. Um, and I, I was really concerned because they wanted us to move in late summer, and I was saying, okay, but what about the firewood issue? I need to have firewood because this house where they wanted us to stay was heated by a wood stove. And I said, well, you know, we don't have firewood there. And, oh, don't worry about it. You can cut firewood at any time of the year. And I'm thinking, no, you can't. I've sold firewood for years. I know how things work. No, you can't. And, um, oh, you'll be fine. You'll be fine. So went there, and we were just always so busy. I mean, just I had just gotten married, and, you know, we're trying to, to understand each other, work out our relationship, having, you know, what do we do for food? What do we, you know, trying to, you know, just early on in our marriage. And so there was very little time, you know, and we were constantly being called to go work at the the store and everything else and then the church as well. And so there was no time to get firewood done. So finally we start, we're almost out of firewood because the house where we were staying was this dump and uh, no insulation. And I do mean no insulation. North East or Northwestern, excuse me, Northwestern PA, which isn't as cold as Maine, but it was still you know, got down to zero degrees or so in the winter. And um, so we finally got out to cut some wood and whatever, some dead stuff that was out in the forest. Well, it was still, it might not have been like cutting a brand new fresh tree down that would be green, but it still had a very high moisture content. So we, we sawed it and we split it and everything else. And it was, you put it in the stove and it just sizzled. So it was kind of great you know we still have a good month or two here to get through and all we have is green firewood you know nice wet firewood so uh how do you do it what do you do well you split it down thinner you split it down into smaller pieces that way the fire can get the moisture evaporated out of the wood quicker and you can get more heat from it so if you've been ripped off by some uh shady uh firewood salesman type of thing and they sold you wet lumber wet wood you're going to need to saw it either saw it into thin discs or split it into smaller pieces um, again another technique that you can use is you can actually take the piece of firewood the length of it and you can cut it into thin slices not lengthwise but perpendicular to the length of the firewood and um, we've done that for years as well uh, with our wood cook stove we call them beaver biscuits <laughs> We would take uh, dead standing timber and we'd cut just them into discs. And those little thin discs, because the end grain is so just right here and right there and only you know about an inch thick at the most, they the moisture evaporates very quickly and produces almost no creosote. It's really good. The downside is that you know you don't have to split anything, which is nice, but the downside is that you're putting them in a lot because they burn up really quickly. So, but that's a possibility. If you've been ripped off by a evil uh, firewood sales type of place, you can still get around that by sawing them into thin discs or by splitting them into kindling size type of things. And you can, you can also crisscross them. Don't lay them all tight into your stove. Pack them in tight. You want to crisscross them so the fire goes up through the different, you know, pieces of wood. Uh, another thing that you can do is you can also go out and get some dry sticks and burn them with the wet firewood to increase the temperature to get the moisture out of the wood quicker. You're still going to have a problem because of the insulating factor of how wet firewood burns, but that's one way to do it. And of course, make sure that you are burning your wood with an open vent on your stove and the flue on the stove pipe, the little lever there that controls there's a little flap inside the stove pipe you want to make sure that, that thing is open so that it's plenty of all the moisture and everything else it's burning hot and uh, don't try turning your flue down don't try turning your vents in and whatever else uh, if you have wet firewood you need to burn it hot 
Um, you were ripped off, you'd, but you can still get through it if you have some smarts to you. So, um, one more verse of scripture here uh, to go to Proverbs 28, verse 8. Just to kind of finish up this kind of an odd study, I realize, but um, it's just some of the wisdom the Lord's blessed me with. And I'm just, you know, I, I drive around, I'm seeing this whole thing of these people scamming others and you know and i just think this is wrong this this really angers me and uh it's it will probably cost people their lives and of course you know well they've rejected jesus christ and if they die in a dark winter well eh, you know i get that i understand that ultimately it's god's judgment but it's just it angers me to see people logging in an unscrupulous manner you know high yield logging irving calls it um, they just come in and rape the forest. That's wrong. But I see the same thing with these firewood sales guys. They're just scamming people, selling them wet firewood and calling it seasoned. And, you know, oftentimes it's not even a full cord. Proverbs 28, verse 8 describes them. He that by usury and unjust gain increaseth his substance, he shall gather it for him that will pity the poor. Um, now, I'm going to tell you right now, a lot of what's going on in this country, um, these corrupt businesses, these people that are greedy and everything else, they're actually, as the verse says there, he will gather it for him that will pity the poor. Um, I pity the poor people. And just men out there, righteous men out there that pity the poor actually have a conscience, you know, and say, no, I can't sell that wood to these people. It's green. It's not even dry and whatever. These corrupt guys their time will come. And of course, you know, if I ever, ever had to go into selling firewood in the area, I could easily put these guys out of business. Not because I could solve faster than them, they have all their, you know, indebted uh, equipment and everything else to make things happen quickly. But just come out and advertise and say, yeah, I actually sell dry firewood and you get a full cord. You know, I don't sell the wet firewood like my uh, <coughs> competitors do. And Corruption in business will only go so far before somebody comes in and does it the right way and puts the others out of business. And the Lord makes it that way. So that's what the Bible is talking about there in Proverbs 28, verse 8. So just a strange study, I realize. I realize I'm kind of good at that, you know, making strange studies. But uh, just wanted to put that out there because it really perturbs me um, when I see these guys selling this you know, seasoned firewood, and I realize they're going to be hurting people through this. And uh, I do care about people. I really do. Um, and I, I see evil and wickedness like that and sin, and, um, and it bothers me, makes me mad. So uh, I don't know where you're at. If you're watching this video and you live down south, well, you really don't need to worry about firewood to make it through the dark winter. Um, if you are in a northern area and you don't have much experience with firewood, unless you can find firewood that has been sawed and split and seasoned for one year as, as it is sawed and split, in other words, not just logs, but it needs to, needs to have been sawed and split and seasoned for a year. You know, and by year, I mean through the summer. If you can find that, good. You're going to pay more for it, but it will be worth it. Um, and you need to make sure it's nice and dry. It should be lighter weight. It should have a lot of checking in the end grain, a lot of cracks in the end grain. Um, that will tell you that it's, it's good stuff. Uh, there are even some places that actually do kiln dry wood as well, which means there's no bugs in it. It's all dead. It's, you know, nice, really dry stuff. And um, that's what you want to burn. Okay? So do not be scammed by these... Uh, thieves that come out there saying that they're selling firewood. So that is going to be it. Thank you for watching.